guys, it's Allie. So, I'm going to be doing a little Q&A video for you today. Uh, but you may be able to notice that this video looks a little bit different. And that's because I'm holding my new camera. Uh, in my Raw Tingles video recently, this was the camera that was shooting the side view. Um, and another neat feature of this camera is that um, it also can be submerged in water. Um, and I got a really great deal on this camera and it really um, couldn't have been made possible without the awesome people who signed up to be my patrons on Patreon. Um, so thank you guys for helping to make this new addition to the channel happen for me. So uh, because of this awesome feature of this camera, my arm got tired, uh, because of this awesome feature, I am going to submerge you guys into a tub of water. And uh, I'm going to be trying something out, something new uh, that I've never done before for this video as I answer some of the questions that have been submitted to me. So I've got some uh, little bottles of food coloring. Merge you in this tub of water and then do some uh, dropping little droplets of food coloring and just play with the visuals of that. I think it's gonna look cool. So here we go. really cold. Okay, one second. Okay, so I had to dry my hand off. So I'm going to be answering several questions that have been submitted. playing with these colors a little bit, just seeing what that looks like. So I hope you guys like it. Let's try this out real quick. <laughs> so hopefully that a neat visual. I've got several colors. And I also have my binaural microphone. So I'll be answering my questions ear to ear. So I hope you enjoy. So let's get started. Okay. <laughs> so the first question is, is the travel agent in Departure 1 a Sherry 3000 Android? Uh, and the answer is yes. you pay close attention in Departure 2 when the Sherry's are um, sort of being all displayed on a spinning platform. You'll see one that has the exact um, outfit. 
outfit and hairstyle and everything of the travel agent in Departure Episode 1. And that's because she was a Shiri 3000 android all along. Next question says, Quite a few of your videos, especially Departure, are quite graphics heavy. I understand you and your boyfriend work together on this. But I was wondering where your knowledge of compositing has come from. Do either of you work in film or TV or have a history in it? <laughs> uh, no, neither of us work in film or television, actually. My boyfriend has a love for film and an, always had an interest in film, but he's not a professional filmmaker and he hasn't really, really studied film formally. I know even less about filmmaking, uh, honestly, <laughs> so, um, and he does a lot of the special effects, especially with Departure, um, and everything that he did in those videos, he learned on his own, just from taking tutorials on YouTube. I'm tapping on the side of the tub to kind of make a ripple effect. <laughs> cool. Okay, the next question is, in the departure series, <laughs> what's up with The idea behind Dotfish is that in the distant future, um, there will be so many, uh, you know, dot .com, dot .net, dot .gov sites. Um, by that point, that they'll they'll all sort of be taken. So I wanted to think of. you know, dot something. Um, and it was just really kind of random. It could have been anything. It could have been dot xylophone or dot cupcake. Uh, but I just thought of dot fish. And I honestly thought it was really hilarious, so I went with it. <laughs> and that's the reason why. person asks, uh, what is your relation to nature in general? Do you enjoy being in the outside world? And could you maybe even consider doing ASMR videos in a non-studio environment more often? Um, I love nature very much. I don't, uh, I'm not super outdoorsy, or at least I don't think of myself as being very outdoorsy, but anytime I go and spend some time in nature, as long as it's not too hot and there aren't too many bugs, <laughs> then I really enjoy myself. And I always find that I feel more sort of peaceful and centered when I have spent time in nature. I think there are actually scientific studies that say that um, nature has a calming effect on the human body. Kind of the opposite of salmon. I really don't like bugs at all. Um, oh, and the other part of that question was if I would consider doing more ASMR videos outdoors, and I certainly would. If there was enough of a demand for that, I would be happy to. Would not be a problem because there are lots of parks around me. In a related question, this says, uh, does your new house have a garden of any kind? Uh, no, I don't have a garden. Or I live in an apartment, but I 
don't even really have a, an apartment style garden um, because I, well I don't really know why. Gardening is something that I really love in theory and wish that I had a talent for, but um, it's not something I've explored thoroughly, but it's on my bucket list, so to speak have a sort of flourishing and successful garden. I would especially really like to grow my own food. I think that would be really fulfilling. Okay, next question. <laughs> what happened to the bowl of wooden and unidentifiable fruit from your very first Thrifty Thursday video? That is still in my home. And it is just sitting out on display. And my son really loves to <laughs> play with the wooden, uh, the wooden fruit a lot. Um, this question says, are you more the domestic type or do you always or often go out at the weekend? Having a child, I think, uh, has made that uh, so. <laughs> it does kind of uh, calm you down <laughs> when you are responsible for a little tiny human. <laughs> um, and I, yeah, I just focus a lot on home and my family, and my work, and of course my channel, <laughs> and that honestly takes up all of my time. I will very, very, very occasionally go out just to, with a couple of my close friends, to have a drink, uh, maybe for a couple of hours, and then I go back home. There's not any partying or staying out late or anything like that. I went through a short period of that, but I also had my son, my son, uh, fairly young. So I didn't really uh, <laughs> live that way for very Do you like to cook? And do you have a favorite kind of food that you like to cook for family and friends? I love to cook. I think I'm actually pretty good at it. What I lack in <laughs> gardening skills, I make up for in the kitchen. And I do have uh, a recipe that I like. Several, actually, but the most requested at my house is my chicken piccata, which is delicious if you've never had it. I recommend trying it. Um, and it is a sort of really light uh, lemony chicken with, it's served with um, capers and a lot of lemon, but um, really good sort of spring or summer meal. Um, and I like to make it with a cucumber dill uh, salad. That's very tasty. And if anybody would like the recipe, I would be happy to share it. Because I think it's delicious. And I also, also make a 
butter chicken, I think, which is a really delicious Indian dish. And um, I really love to bake also, and I'm particularly talented at making uh, cake pops. And I considered doing cake pops for a tutorial tingles one week, so maybe I'll do that someday. Um, this question is, what was your favorite trip to a foreign country? I have two trips that were really exciting ones. When I was about 12, I took a trip to London uh, because I have some extended family over there. My dad's side of the family is English, and that was really exciting for me. I'd always wanted to go, and to this day, I still want to go back very badly. Um, but then when I was 16, I took a trip to, a family trip to Belize, which is a little country in Central America believe his neighbors with, I think, Guatemala. It was a very eye-opening experience for me because I um, was staying in a, you know, pretty nice hotel with good food and, you know, it was a sort of vacation kind of trip during spring break one year barely five miles outside of where I was staying, there was just um, incredible amounts of poverty in the sort of village that was there. Um, and it was really an interesting experience because there I was with, um, you know, a really, um, you know, a nice hotel and pool and vacation type things and just down the road was a really run down little schoolhouse and kids running around without any shoes um, and that sounds like it would make it an unpleasant trip but it definitely didn't I was really um, the most fascinated with uh, the people that uh, lived in the, in the town that we were staying in, and um, I saw some incredible things while I was there, and it was very hot, um, but it was beautiful, it was absolutely beautiful, and um, yeah, it was wonderful, I really would love to go back and visit someday. a really great trip too. Um, what else? Mm. Oh, this question is... Um, oh, I apologize, I hear a little bit of tapping. I'm not sure if that's rain or just some general uh, creakiness of pipes here. I hope it's not bothering you. Um, this says, since you show some clear interest in cosmology and utopia in your departure series, I wonder if you might also be a fan of science fiction in general. If this is correct, which authors, kinds, movies, or series of science fiction do you like the most? And how will this maybe influence your plot development in the coming departure series? Yes, I do like sci-fi, but I've only sort of recently realized that I'm a sci-fi fan. I think I've always been one, but I didn't really know it. I've always known that I love sort of fantasy uh, novels and that genre in general, but um, 
I remember really, really loving the Ender's Game series when I was uh, younger. And one series that I love to this day that I guess I didn't realize at the time was science fiction, but it obviously is, was uh, the Wrinkle in Time series. And I absolutely love that story. I think it's beautiful. Those are some of my earlier sci-fi <laughs> influences. And now I am a fan of Philip K. Dick, and I also am a big, big, big fan of the uh, Firefly Serenity series by Joss Whedon. So those are just some of my sci-fi influences, I guess. And as far as how they will influence Departure, I cannot say too much about that, but uh, I think the Philip K. Dick influences will definitely be present in coming episodes. But that's all I'll say. Next question is, besides cats, did you ever have other kinds of pets in your life? And I did. I've had cats for most of my life, but additionally, when I was, uh, from when I was about nine or ten up until, I guess, sort of now, my family had two English cats. English Collies are basically Lassie dogs. Both of my dogs look just like Lassie from, from the TV show. Uh, their names were Duchess and Ringo. And I named Ringo for my favorite Beatles member. Uh, Ringo passed away um, a few months ago almost a year ago. Or, gosh, maybe it might be well, maybe more than a year ago now. It's been some time. Um, he was pretty old and sick. And Duchess is still with us. She lives with my parents. And uh, she's pretty... She, she's getting up there in age, too. She probably won't be with us for too much longer, but she's a good dog, and I love her very much, and I miss Ringo sometimes. They're really special to me. This one says, what's your favorite kind of breakfast? <laughs> I have, I guess, two favorites. I like Eggs and Soldiers, which is just a soft-boiled egg uh, kept in the shell, and the soldiers are thin strips of buttered toast that you dip into the egg yolk, because it's kind of runny. And my grandma and my granddad gave that to me when I was a kid, when I would go stay with them. Uh, I think it's kind of an English thing. From what I understand, they also, it's also kind of a Canadian thing too, possibly, but anyway, I love it. <laughs> to this day, I think it's delicious. Yeah. And my other favorite is just a sort of kind of classic hearty breakfast with eggs and bacon and toast and a glass of OJ and a cup of coffee. <laughs> um, that's obviously not for breakfast every day, because who has time for that, but if I did have time, I would have that every single day. And I like my eggs to be sunny side up, always. And I like them pretty runny. And I 
also like to have some sliced tomato with that breakfast. That's what makes it good. Maybe some fruit if I have some. But definitely tomato with a little salt and pepper. I'm more of a savory breakfast person than a sweet breakfast. Like I prefer to have something like that or sugary cereal or pancakes or waffles. Oh, and I also love uh, smoked salmon on a bagel for breakfast. That's a good one too. I'm a big fan of smoked salmon. Uh, okay. This question is if you could take just three items, not persons, and besides basic clothes, food, and necessary tools to a solitary island for a stay of one year, what would they be? Ooh, three items. Um, okay. I think about that one. Well, I think, okay, well, this, this one depends. this is considered one item, then I would bring the entire Harry Potter series from book one to book seven. But if that is not considered one item and it's considered seven, then I would choose either... Which one? I would choose either Order of the Phoenix or Deathly Hallows. Probably book seven then, just so that I could have the end of the story there with me for that whole year. And it's the biggest one, I think, isn't it? Maybe not. Okay, and then my second item, I think I would take a camera so that I could record video um, and log my experiences and uh, document everything that took place. I think that would be really important and definitely very beneficial to have later on. And then my third item, what would it be? Hmm. It would be of my son because if I'm all alone and I can't take him with me then I would at least want to be able to see his face every day otherwise my life would be really hard because he's really Do you like music? <laughs> music? Or do you maybe even like to play an instrument? Have you at least learned to play an instrument in your childhood? I love music very much. It's a big part of my world. Uh, I've always been a music lover from childhood. My dad is a very, very, very big music lover himself, and he sort of passed that down to me. I am not really talented with any instruments. I did take some brief piano lessons as a child, and I hated it, but looking back, I of course wish I had continued. Um, I like to sing, and I think I have a pretty decent singing voice. I was involved in a lot of choirs growing up in my community and also through school. And I wish that I 
was talented with the piano because then I could accompany myself when I sang. Oh well. Um, this question says, I've got a few of the Easter eggs in Departure 2, but could you tell us all of them? <laughs> all of them. Um, I will try to tell you as many as I can think of. There definitely are several. Okay, um... So, in the Sherry 3000 commercial... I'm getting food color. In the Sherry 3000 commercial, there's a little symbol that shows up when she's talking about holidays. And, um, there are, there's a Christmas tree symbol and a menorah, and it's just like little vector art. There's a third symbol that we actually created. It's made up. And we made it to symbolize a fictional future holiday that uh, I thought could be uh, something that is in place in this time in our future. Uh, it is made to represent holiday basically celebrating uh, the beginning of singularity and kind of like the idea of a some form of like spirituality emerging from technological singularity occurring uh, so I sort of created a holiday around that um, I won't get into what all singularity is and means right now because it's a little involved, but if you are interested, just um, Google, Google a man called Ray Kurzweil and that'll be a good start. <clears throat> um, the tune that Sherry 3000, the stewardess, is humming in the beginning of the Cryo sleep scene is a song called Daisy Bell. And that was written in, I believe, 1892 or somewhere around there. And I chose that song because it um, was the first song. It has a lot of significance, actually. It was the first song ever sung by a computer was um, an IBM 704 that was made to sing the song in 1961. And it was a really big deal. And it was also sung by the HAL 9000 computer in 2001 A Space Odyssey as he is being deactivated. And it's actually a really sad scene. It makes me sad. And what's also interesting is that growing up, when I was really, really little, my granddad, the same one who gave me eggs and soldiers, he used to sing that to me before I could, would go to sleep at night. So it's kind of special to me and on a personal level, too. Um, oh, another kind of funny Easter egg is that all of the dream sequences actually based on uh, real works of fiction. So I'll tell you what they all are. Um, the first one, The Value of X, is based on um, uh, a science fiction novel call called The Skylark of Space uh, by E.E. E. Smith and Lee Hawkins Garby, I think. And it is about this element this newly discovered element called Metal X that allows for 
faster than speed of light um, space travel. And so that was um, what the story was about, so that was kind of the inspiration for The Value of X, which was the title of the first dream. And then the second one, The Dark Wood, which is the one that <laughs> gets chosen for you. Spoiler alert, sorry if you haven't seen it. Um, it's based on a scene in um, Dante's Inferno. And Dante's Inferno is the first part of the epic poem um, uh, Divine Comedy. But there's uh, a part in Dante's Inferno where Dante is in a... he's lost in a dark forest, much like the one that you see in the dream sequence, and he can't find uh, his way. So, <laughs> that's what that was based on. And then the Garden of Omicron, which is actually my favorite of the dream sequences, uh, is based on something that is actually based on something else, which is neat. was, there's a sort of classic episode of uh, Star Trek, uh, and it's called This Side of Paradise, and in that episode, Spock visits a planet called uh, Omicron Seti 3, um, and on the planet, a Federation colony had been set up a long, long time ago. And the, all the people in the colony were believed to have been totally uh, wiped out by uh, radioactive waves. So Spock arrives and then realizes that they actually uh, are all alive and uh, no one died. And they're all just sort of living in this kind of utopian bliss. <laughs> uh, and he realizes that they all sort of survive off of uh, a diet of these strange flowers that grow only on the planet. Uh, so he tries some, and then he sort of begins to find himself falling in love and starting to uh, forget why he came there in the first place. And he gets really, he just starts to forget about his mission altogether. Um, and that episode of Star Trek is actually based on something else. And that is the um, uh, part of the, of the Odyssey, Homer's Odyssey, uh, where they go to the land of the Lotus Eaters. And it's basically the same kind of story. <laughs> so that's interesting. So those are what all the dream sequences are based on. And then, what else? Okay, yeah, uh, the Like a Leaf on the Wind, that line is um, a reference to Serenity, just the Firefly film. Was it Serenity? I can't remember. Um, and I won't tell you who, but a prominent member of the uh, of the crew. Uh, those are his final words before he's very uh, kind of violently. So that was just a little, it was meant to actually be a little bit of like morbid <laughs> foreshadowing to what is about to happen on the ship that you're aboard. <laughs> and then the line, um, now let's count some sheep towards the end of that scene. When the, st when the stewardess says let's count some sheep, that's just a little nod to um, 
the novel by Philip K. Dick, uh, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, which is also um, what Blade Runner is based on, loosely based on. So, yeah. Tons of sci-fi references in there. And non-sci-fi references also. Um, that's all I can think of for the time being, but if I think of anything else, uh, maybe I'll tell you in the next Q&A video. Um, okay, last question, I think. Uh, what are some of the little behind-the-scenes tricks you use to create the illusion of realism in Departure 2? Um, okay, so, when I was shooting the scene where I'm in the, um, spaceship and I'm preparing you for your, your journey, we had already created the image, uh, that we were going to use for the spaceship and the, um, the pod that you're in, the sort of surrounding walls of the pod and the bars. Um, so the camera that I was shooting with has a, an LCD pop-out screen that, you know, I can see what I'm, what I'm doing when I'm shooting. So we printed out a uh, sort of to scale version of the image that we were going to use for the scene. And we cut it out, and it was very small, and we cut it out, and we stuck it to the LCD screen so that I could, when I was shooting, see all of the, all of the, um, I guess, parameters that I had to work within. Because if I moved my arm and just the wrong way, then that scene actually would have looked really weird. So I had to be very careful where I, um, but when I was kind of reaching in to like attach the urchin to your arm, that kind of thing, my arms had to be in really specific spots. So that is a trick that we used to make sure that I got that right. The boot. In the, I'm sorry, the Aratus boot that I show you that's conveniently located under your cryo bed. Um, that was actually a roller blade that I picked up from the thrift store. And we took the wheels off of it, uh, just sort of deconstructed it, and then just spray painted it with a matte black finish. And that was it. That was our Aratus boot. And let's see, what else? The eye scanner was um, the microphone from a little, kind of just a cheap gaming headset. Oh no, no, sorry, not a headset. It was um, a stand-up little microphone that you can get really cheap at the store. We snapped it off of its little base and then put some small strips of gold duct tape around it to make it look kind of cool. And that's what we used for the eye scanner. And the remora, the uh, transcranial muscle stimulator and sleep manager, the thing that goes on your head. The um, inner plastic lining of a construction hard hat, spray painted matte black, and then we stuck little beads, little plastic beads to it, and silver wire just to make it look kind of neat. <laughs> and that was it. 
And that was also from a thrift store. And there's a lot of that kind of stuff. Those are just some little hacks that we did, I guess. Let's see it. It's kind of funny. Oh, and then there's one more question. said something like, in true sound of music form, what are some of your favorite things? <laughs> and that's because the sound of music is my favorite movie, so I like that question. Um, let's see. A few of my favorite things. There's so many. Talk until I get tired of it. I love um, pickles. <laughs> I eat pickles a lot. And tomatoes and sushi. Those are some of my favorite foods. Well, actually, a lot of my favorite things are foods <laughs> because foods are one of my favorite things. Um, I also love baby animals, but who doesn't? And I love Johnny Depp. He's one of my favorite things. <laughs> and Sun Jack is definitely my favorite thing by far. And I love ASMR videos. <laughs> That's definitely one of my favorite things. And I love making them, but watching them. some of my favorites. That's just a big trigger for me. And I like uh, to take baths, <laughs> really warm baths, and I love uh, Bob Dylan and Cat Stevens. Jimi Hendrix. And uh, who else? Well, lots of musicians. Hmm. There's about a bajillion other things <laughs> that I could say are my favorite things. Leave it for another time. Because that would just take too long. Well, guys. <laughs> I really hope that you've enjoyed this kind of 
funky experimental video. I have enjoyed getting blue food coloring all over my hands. <laughs> Let me know what you thought of the underwater effect. I'd love to keep doing these if you guys like them. Well guys, I hope you sleep well and have pleasant dreams. Seeing you again very soon.